Are you ready for a walkthrough on how to do calendar management, especially if you're a virtual assistant? If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Leanne Lai. I have been working for most of those 15 years old and I now run a virtual assistant agency here in the Philippines called 2XU. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, as someone who has been working remotely for most of my life basically and as someone who has also worked with a lot of amazing entrepreneurs i understand how crazy a calendar scheduling could get basically when you are traveling because you can't work anywhere or when you're doing events and you still have client calls i have been there of like trying to figure out what is the best way to make sure that my calendar doesn't conflict with anything else important and with my assistant i've even been able to refine this better and better so i want to walk you through a hopefully an ideal system of how you can manage your client's calendar. And unlike a previous video that I've done on how to manage a calendar, I am gonna actually walk you guys through Google Calendar because that's the one that I use. If you guys use other calendar software, it should kind of be the same. It should have just minor differences on it, but I do use, again, just Google Calendar, so I'll walk you guys how that would look like. Now, the first thing you wanna do if you are going to be managing your client's calendar is to make sure that you first review and assess. That's kind of the first thing you have to keep in mind is try to see if there are patterns in their day-to-day. -day. Try to see what are the usual types of meetings that they're in, what breaks they usually take, and what are the recurring things that happen from daily, weekly, monthly on their calendar. This is just so you can list them down ideally, so then you can keep it in mind as you're scheduling things for them, and as well as actually then setting it up on their calendar. So here on the calendar that I have here, so this is one of my dummy accounts, and I just wanted to use this because if you guys looked at my schedule, my actual calendar, of course, I don't want you guys have, have access to that. So I'm just using my uh, dummy account for this. So this is basically what a blank week now. Um, so if you guys don't know, there's different shortcuts on Google calendars. There's M if you want to see like the whole month. There is uh, W if you want to see the week. D if you just want to see the day. And let's say that you went, uh, you know, the next day or you're lost on like, oh, what, to, what is today? Just click T. And that'll bring you back to what this day is. So right now, um, as you guys can see, I'm filming this on October 11th. That's basically um, just quick shortcuts for you guys to remember. Now, I like week view the most because I can see the overview. But again, review and assess what is currently working for your client. So then you can start from there rather than starting from scratch. Now, the first thing you want to do is on a call with your client or you can ask them questions plot out life or plot out their life basically so what i mean by this is for example on my actual calendar i have there scheduled my lunch and my lunch honestly is a brunch because i get hungry around 10 o'clock um is so i'll put here brunch and i actually block that out on my whole schedule so i also try to add just a cute little emoji and this is usually for um this is usually for recurring um ones that i have so i'll put like you know that cute little hungry emoji on there for brunch and then um and then i'm making sure if you guys don't know how to do this yet so um i'll go on to um just event more options and then i'll make sure that this repeats every single day because this is like you know brunch the importance of this and this is actually something that i learned from my business coach the importance of putting your life on here is especially when you're an entrepreneur you're trying to do everything all at once and you forget to take care of yourself you miss food you miss rest and it's important that you add in the different parts of your life so it doesn't get scheduled over so you as a person you don't have to overwhelm or burn out yourself just because you're trying to do everything all at once so that's the first thing is plot out what does the life part basically of your client look like so you can make sure that you've captured it on here other than brunch of course like i schedule out when i want to stop working so usually it's around nine o'clock so here i'll put in uh turning off so what that means is i'm logging off i'm doing whatever else thing that i need to do so again i just grab a cute little emoji of there you go you're just turning off of like yep i'm logging off for the day and then um one more thing that you can add to this and by the way you can just also click the daily there for the repeat um it's your sleep time so depending on the sleep time for your client like for example for me i typically like to go to sleep at 10 o'clock 
because sometimes I go to sleep at 12. Uh, but I usually try to already start getting into bed at around 10 o'clock and I usually try to sleep all the way to 6 a.m., sometimes 5.30 a.m. So I will actually plot that out for the next day and I will put this on repeat on daily because this is my sleep time. So again, depending on your client, this is why it's important to um, have a call with them or just ask them for their preferences. Again, to make sure that this is actually blocked out on their calendar. That's the main key importance here. So now we've blocked off um, their sleep time, we've blocked off their lunch, you know, if they're taking dinner, you can put in dinner in here. Uh, and basically also then plotting out any breaks or focus work time. And that comes out to plotting out the business side. So what I mean by plotting out the business side, so earlier I said check basically and make sure that they do have their recurring meetings, daily, weekly, monthly. So for example, again, if I was plotting this out as my own calendar, I know that 9 o'clock every single day I have a um, daily sync with... My assistant honey you guys probably seen her in other videos so this one um does repeat but only on um, every weekday so basically from 9 a.m 10 a.m uh i schedule that out onto my calendar and the next is any other recurring meetings that your client might have like for example again for me i have the um company scrum basically every 1 p.m on mondays so here i will have this repeat weekly on monday um and so on and so forth so it's just you plotting out what these schedules are there could be monthly ones where it's a basically for example for us we have a client check-in so i'll put a random one on here for friday of client monthly check-in right there uh, and then make sure that it does repeat either annually or monthly on the second Friday, um, depending again on that schedule. So you want to start plotting out basically, this is again why I like the week view. What are the recurring things based off of your client's schedule and making sure that they are already in there. The other thing again is to make sure you plot out again also break times or focus time. So for example, for me, I know I can get a lot of focus time from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. So I'll actually block this out as focus time. And again, it's it's a way for me to make sure that no one else books this schedule for me. And in the afternoon, I know from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, I do a, another round of focus time basically. And that's basically like I've, I've plotted out like what are the times that I don't want any meetings in there. And then in between, um, there's still a lot of schedule basically for other meetings, other client meetings, so on and so forth. Next is you want to start creating templates for these recurring meetings or at least the meetings that do pop up once in a while. So if you guys have hopefully watched a lot of my videos on ChatGPT, um, you can use ChatGPT to create those templates for calendar invites. So for example, create a calendar event description for a daily sync with my assistant so you can modify this in any way but it's just the calendar description for it basically so we have the purpose agenda so on and so forth um so i can easily just copy and paste this um and make sure that it is then onto um this part of the calendar so um we go ahead and edit this so now every single time that we set up a call basically we can use this template over and over again especially if it's going to be like onboarding with a client for example we have a template inside of 2xu where basically we can go ahead and repeat that every single time that we are onboarding with a client we're doing a final interview with an applicant so on and so forth we basically have the template that we can use over and over again to provide that clarity for the people attending because that's basically what the calendar description is especially if your client is very very busy where they're running around and doing a lot of different things having your calendar description be very clear on what to expect on that meeting helps them because they could be coming off of another meeting and thinking this meeting is kind of the same thing basically so keep that in mind of making sure that you have that clarity when you are setting up the calendar invites with templates with ways you can again use chat GPT to create those description but to be able to provide that clarity for both your client and the person they're meeting on anything that's important before they jump on that call. Now, of course, if your client is going to be attending it through Zoom, for example, you can add it as the location here. Um, you can make sure that maybe you have like a recurring Zoom meeting on here. You can add a Google Meet video conferencing if that's a preference or any other ways that the client basically and the person they're meeting uh, is going to sync up. If it's an in-person, you can add the location here as well. Now, other parts of creating this template. So I always say, 
double, triple check your work. Uh, so check again the dates, check the times that they're going to meet, check if it is a recurring meeting, making sure that you add it on here, and then making sure that you have uh, this automatically turns on, which can be a little bit of annoying. Right there, I just added a guess, but I took it away because I don't want you guys to see their email. Um, but automatically, it said join with Google Meet. You can just X that basically if they're not going to be joining through Google Meet. Again, I usually add Zoom uh, details on here, or you can also add it here on like the platform that you guys are going to be using. And again, double, triple check the information, the details, the invitees, who's going to be seeing this, so on and so forth. So you are making sure that when you do send out a calendar invite, it is clear for all parties on what this is about. Next is you can start now checking for conflict. This is something that my assistant and I do every single week just because clients move meetings or uh, our EAs or employees move meetings. So we have to always check if there is conflict, if there's anything that needs to be adjusted or that I'm traveling. That's the other thing. So for example, whenever I'm traveling, I try to plot it out here on top. So it is like, you know, travel to, you know, Il Ilo, for example. Um, I plot it out on top. So then for my assistant, she can keep that in mind on, okay, you know, these days Leanne isn't going to be available. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that that's scheduled out. Uh, and I will usually even put in you know, my flight time. Again, so that remains to be busy, so nothing gets scheduled on there because I'll be on a flight anyway. So that's kind of the importance of having that on there, of putting details basically of your client's day. So again, you don't accidentally book anything on there that shouldn't be there. So anytime that you do, let's say on the client monthly check-in, just because it is once a month, there is another meeting on here, then of course, best practice for this is if it's a recurring meeting, most of the time it's already set. So you wanna try to have this, you know, reschedule this with that person, talk to them like, hey, unfortunately there was a conflict on the schedule. Can we move this? Can we make this uh, be, you know, an hour later or half an hour later, basically based on what I just moved. So it just makes it easier for your client to be able to have a schedule that they can actually manage and not be too confusing. Now, another tool that you might be setting up with your client is a scheduler. So setting up a scheduler. So Google actually just came out with this where um, you can actually create a actual book link so here for example let's say this is um, sync times with employee so this is you know if an employee wants to schedule a uh, meeting so we can make this be just 30 minutes uh, and then the schedule you can set that up really quickly it could be single you know, 60 day advance uh, you can adjust the availability of that is there any buffer time that your client would need, so on and so forth. And you can add here the cool little template description. So every single time someone books, it just shows up there. You can change how the booking page would look like, so on and so forth. And then you basically have a bookable like appointment schedule. So that you can now use this, you can share this link. And if you use tools like Calendly before, this is basically what it is. And let's say that you have someone who um, like, oh, can I schedule a time with the, um, I'm putting this on incognito mode, uh, can you schedule a time with the client? Like I, I really have something that I really want to talk to them about. You can send them this booking link. They can easily now go ahead and schedule right off the bat uh, with that because they can see the available times based on their calendar. So it's a really cool and straightforward way. Again, I use Calendly still to this day, even though the Google has come out with this for other reasons why I use Calendly. Uh, but that is one of the ways that you can do it. You can set up the same thing if you are using tools like Calendly, Acuity, Motion. There's so many others that have popped out now, especially AI powered ones. So you can check that out, but that's as quick and easy and simple as it is basically to set up a scheduler. And again, this is why it's important to plot out your client's life on their calendar so it doesn't get accidentally booked on with the scheduler tool. Now, a couple of best practices when it comes to managing your client's calendar or your own calendar. One, keep in mind time zone differences. Now, there is a way that you can add different time zones on Google Calendar or other calendars as well. I recommend using a tool called Savvy Time, S-A-V-V-Y Time. It's a Google extension where you can easily scroll through different time zones when you're scheduling, especially if, let's say your client is in the US and you're trying to schedule for someone who's in Dubai or in Australia, Australia, you can easily check what times would be best for all parties basically to make sure that 
they're actually awake during those meetings. Another best practice is to just review the calendar often. Now my calendar has changed a lot, especially the personal time on there, just because you know my life changes. I travel, I go to different places. I sometimes might not have uh, my workout time on there in my calendar just because I'm doing something else. So having to review with your client their schedule often just helps keep it just accurate and in place where they're supposed to be spending their time with their kid for their birthday, but you scheduled accidentally scheduled a meeting on there. You want to avoid those times. So it's really important that you review and you also set priorities often for them of like, hey, looking at the upcoming month, is there anything else that I need to know of your travel, of things that are coming? You can do this weekly as well of like what is coming up for this week. But honestly, it is usually better to do it on a monthly basis. So then you're always looking at 30, 60 days ahead to make sure that their calendar is basically guarded. And lastly, make sure they try to block out important tasks that your client needs to do. Now, I am a huge fan of time blocking. I try to, you know, on those block times on my calendar of me focus time, basically, I put in what specific project or task I want to work on during that time. So then again, nothing gets scheduled in during those important focus time for me. So make sure that you do that with your client as well as if there is something that you know is a priority for them to get done, blocking it that on their calendar really helps so then they're not being pulled into multiple different directions they're just focused on the thing that they need to get done and honestly the same thing goes for you now managing a calendar you're basically kind of just the guard for their calendar to make sure that the things that are important to your client actually stays on the calendar and things that needs to be rescheduled or moved or talked over with someone else you are in charge of so as you are taking more and more of your client's calendar, basically essentially also controlling their life on that end, make sure that you do take responsibility and take caution on the doing the things of taking care of their calendar. Now, if you guys like this video, of course, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below. Do you have any questions on calendar management? I'll probably do a future video of that as well or reply to your comments below. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos on how to work from home and how to run a business from home. And you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here. I hope you guys have an amazing day and with the small steps matters. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.